Welcome one, welcome all, welcome into the Young Dad Podcast. I'm your host, Jay, and with me, as always, is a man who always plays it cool, except when it's time to break your leg. It's A, Aaron. Give it up for him, people. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, how the heck are you today, my brother? I'm doing great, man. Another beautiful day, another chance at positivity. I love it. I love it. Dude, we have an amazing show for the listeners today. It was so much fun talking to Matt. Matt is the creative, the founder, the everything behind the Unstoppable Dad Project, the podcast, the website, the Instagram, the everything. Fantastic content. Just high energy, high positivity, high vibration, good vibes through and through all the way. I don't know about you, but I am ecstatic for the listeners to listen to this one. Are you? I am. You know, this guy's a wealth of knowledge, and he dropped a lot of uh, gems throughout this whole episode. So, you know, you guys keep your ears open and make sure you're listening to the to the message between the lines. And this is one you might even want to take notes for. So while you're looking for your notepad and your pen, once you find that, you know what to do. Pull up a chair. Grab a snack, grab a juice box, and let's talk. Thank you, thank you to our live studio audience. Matt, welcome on to the show. We're super happy to have you. We're psyched to talk to you today. Uh, Before we jump in here, uh, feet first into the deep end, I have to ask you a quick question kind of a running tally on the show. It's just very, very important to what we do here. Um, Does pineapple go on pizza? Yes. Yes. Yeah, baby. Oh, wow. That that hurt. All right. Well, the current score for any of our listeners uh, keeping tally with us is uh, now six to four to one. So Aaron's a bit happy about that since he's been kind of the loner, one of the few loners that – things pineapple goes on pizza. So I guess you guys can talk and I'll just sit by. Um, (laughs) Anyways, all right, Matt, tell us a little bit about you, your platform and why you do what you do. Well, so I am, I'm a, I'm a coach. I, uh, I have been a coach now for 15 years. I, at the moment, um, I work with dads predominantly. I, uh, help dads really just reclaim their strength and athleticism. So I've got a bit of a, uh, I guess, a fitness first mentality where the body, fo- like the the health of the body flows into everything else that helps. So I help at the moment about 50 different dads, you know, to, to do that. Uh, before I started doing that, uh, I owned and operated my own gym for 11 years. And so I was lucky enough to do that, walk with people, for, uh, help people from all walks of life. I actually got into coaching through American football. So I started, I started playing over here in Australia when I was in finishing high school. And uh, I played that locally for uh, 10 years, got to do a couple of representative teams and then ended up moving into coaching football. And that kind of led me on the path that I'm on to then go into firstly personal training then into opening up my own gym and then going from there. So I'm on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, got a young family. So I've got a son and a daughter. My son's four, my daughter's seven, um, been married for almost 10 years now. Um, and yeah, that's kind of me in a really condensed nutshell. And there's obviously a lot I can go into there, but that's covering off kind of the last 20 years of my life. No, I definitely covered all the bases there. Um, so you mentioned that you you train, you've been training people for what, like fifteen years now, right? Yeah, fifteen years now. And and that's between football. When you say American football, do you mean soccer or like uh, football? Football, like no, grid. He means American. I mean American football. I mean gridiron. Like what? What we like? Like NFL? NFL football. football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. That's what it, <laughs> I, I sometimes have to distinguish, try and distinguish that the, because it's American football. Australians would refer to it as gridiron. Most Australians would refer to it as gridiron. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's just getting the terminology right. But obviously to, for you guys, it's probably football. Um, that's, uh, yeah. 
So you wow. go ahead, Aaron. So it, it, I didn't know that it's really prominent like that in Australia. Are there like leagues around to play? In? Yeah, so there is. There are. There's local leagues. So I like I grew up playing all sorts of sports. We grew. I grew up in New South, like a uh, rural part of New South Wales, where uh, down near the Victorian border, which is where it's predominantly AFL. So that's kind of what I was exposed to from a young age for a sport. Don't know if you've ever seen AFL, but there's, it's basically like everyone's punting the ball back and forth to each other and trying to score via, via punting the ball back and forth um, on a field, which is like almost twice the size of an American football field. Um, And I grew up playing that. And then we moved up to Queensland and Queensland is a rugby league state. So it's a different code of football. So I started playing that when I was all, all the way through high school and in grade and I was okay at it. I was never great. Um, and then in grade 12, I had a friend that we found a local American football club and he said, come and have a go at this. And I just like, I fell in love with it at that point. And it was, um, it's still a very fringe sport. It's, it's a very fringe sport. The sport's grown massively since I first started playing. Um, but when I first started playing, there was still like there was an organized league um, in each state, which there still is now. We have um, I've been lucky enough to coach on like national teams as well, too. So they run for uh, under 19. So out the youth football programs, they've um, you know, we've been able to go over to Mexico and China and play in the World Cup that the International Football Federation like organized. So there's while it's not like one of the top tier sport sports over here there's still organized leagues over here that's really cool so the ifl is like indoor football no it's ifaf is the name of the governing league so it's ifaf which is international football international american football federation or something like that so it's actual you know it's it's outdoor football pads and helmets okay, the whole lot the difference is like say for example with the with the U19, the under-19 um, World Cup that we played in, you're looking at kind of Div 3, um, NAIA, like college kids that are playing in it. You're not going to get your, you're not going to get your kids that are your Div 1, Div 2 college recruits playing against our guys who, you know, have limited exposure to the sport. Yeah, because those Div 1, Div 2 guys are probably the ones that are getting looked at by tons of other places 100 percent, and it's an it's an amateur sport like it at that level it's amateur it's not professional so those mm-hmm. kids that are looking and we've got like i've been lucky enough that we've i've had um some kids that i coached at a local level actually go over and obtain scholarships um two most recently had one one in hawaii and one at indiana who i think get transferring at the moment um but like we've got some kids that are able to go and get scholarships at these div ones and even some of them opt out of playing for the national team just because the chance of getting injured is just not worth them losing the scholarship that they've or the opportunity that they've got to go and play under a scholarship no yeah, that 100 makes sense so you know it, it it's interesting have you has there been any news of you know the xfl picking from your local leagues? I mean, I know it's, it's probably a long shot, but I, I do know that they're trying to diversify and, and find talent from, you know, all across the world as opposed to just in America. Yeah, and not that not that I've heard. Um, to be fair, like even though I started in that sport, I've been pretty – I kind of stepped away from coaching that particular sport around COVID. We were kind of set to go and do the World Cup in 2020 – and that got cancelled because there was obviously no international travel. And at that point, um, we had because I had the gym at that point, the gym got shut down. So there was other things that were on my plate where I kind of gave away the coaching of the sport. Uh, but I'm still kind of keep my finger on the pulse with what's going on. So nothing really from the XFL. There's actually a fairly big push from the NFL coming into like Australia, not so much from a team, but like talent. Re- talent recruitment like there's a couple of um like jordan mylata who plays on he's a a lineman for he's a tackle for the eagles um you know he's he's australian there's a few and like mainly offensive line defensive line 
there's a few players outside of punters that have come from Australia that go through, I think it's like the international player pathway or whatever it is that they call. So there's more emphasis from the NFL kind of coming down the pipeline to look for talent to go over, um, but not so much from the XFL. Yeah, I know. I remember uh, pretty recently uh, Jared Hain coming yeah. from uh, rugby. Yeah. He was, he was a pretty good standout. It just never caught on. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's so interesting. I, I can't wait to see if that develops. You know, there's been you, there's so much talent now. There's been within the sport. There's probably been more like – like Australia's a, like Australia as a country only has I think I think from memory like it's got 28 million people right so it's not a super big country like that's the that's the entire country um but we've had like Jared Hain has been the most high profile one but there's guys that have had a lot more success than him like there's Adam Adam Gotsis, who's a kid that played local football down in Victoria who's now I think he's in his ninth year He's playing for the Jags at the moment. And then you've got like Jordan Mailata, who even though he didn't play local football, he didn't have the profile of Jared Hayne in rugby league um, before he went over there. And you've so and then you've got like Jesse Williams who played local football. Like he was he would play for Alabama for a few years and then played for the Seahawks. Like there's been some guys that have gone over yeah. there outside of the kickers and punters who have had a lot at like a good amount of success in the sport. And I think one thing that um, like the, the league in Australia is doing a lot better now is they're highlighting those guys rather than the high profile guys like that have gone over there and maybe not have, have had as much success. But like guys who still went over and like did it. Yeah. And actually did it for a good amount of time, you know, like I said, yeah. you know, there's guys that are actually still, playing in the league who have had, you know, multiple year tenures, whereas, and, um, you know, there's Jared Hayne as a human being is a little bit of a dirt bag, just personal opinion. Um, <laughs> you know, he's, he's actually just been released from uh, jail. So that's, uh, that gives you a bit of a, that's, that's how that's going, that's, for, that's how that's going for him. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got some decent human beings that have actually gone over there and are having like, decent careers like you know jordan who's i think what he's maybe in his fifth year now and then you've got like adam gotsis who's like nine years like you've got these people that are actually doing it properly who have gone through the right way and not just kind of ridden the coattails off the back of success in other sports yeah no i mean there's there's one guy on my seattle seahawks uh michael dixon he's from sydney yep. our punter and of course it's it's hard to find some of those guys and the NFL outside of like the kicking and the kicking game, because it's just so, so much more common yeah. that those are the guys that are like highlighted and kind of picked out from these countries by colleges. So, well, there's such, you know, I think it's important that they, they highlight these other dudes from these other positions. There's such a different skill set to what happens in our sports, like our sport, like our primary sports over here when it comes mm -hmm. to like the other positions on the field, like there's just such a vastly different level of knowledge and skill that needs to be had. But like punting, yes, there is a lot of technicality that goes in it. But if you grew up in the same area that like I grew up in, in my early years, like we are literally punting the ball back and forwards to each other in our spare time, you know? So it, it, it's a natural, it's, a natural progression that like there's a lot of people with very big legs out out here that can slot into a team and, and pump the ball like with decent hang time and know the mechanics of that because it's just some it's just exposure and you know that's the thing with anyone that's good at sport like exposure is sometimes the biggest thing that you need in order to actually get good at something yeah no 100 percent. that's very common to over here to where we're taught from like a young age like we're taught throwing the ball instead of punting it kicking it it's all throwing you're always throwing a ball back and forth a football any ball it's always throwing over here so that's interesting that it's so different one's arms one's legs yeah and there's i mean there's transferable skills like athleticism is transferable like it, it's universal but then there's actual game knowledge and when you've had if you're looking at, you know, 
say, an offensive lineman, you're looking at somebody who's had 10 years, like, you know, let's say, you know, how many years you're in high school, like, let's say three or four years in high school and then three or four years in college. So you've got six to eight years to play catch, like, uh, play catch up on just knowledge of basic techniques. Like, that's a deficit that you, it's going to be very hard to make up. There's, yeah, you, the, the, like, you would have to be, have an exceptional level of athleticism. And the fact is, like, when you're at that level, everyone's got an exceptional level of athleticism. Like, that's why they're there. Exactly, yeah. So it's it's a hard, like, that's where that side of things for people to come from Australia and be able to go and play at that level and do it for such a long time, like, it's a, it speaks to their work ethic and their character to be able to get to that point because they're making up a deficit which is a very, very hard deficit to overcome. Most definitely. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, it's just not here, you know, those defensive and offensive linemen are being taught the specific stances that they're going to use for the rest of their lives and, the, like, the progression through college football and to the NFL, you know, if they're of the athletic profile that matches, you know. But at the end of the day, athleticism can still win out. Athleticism and work ethic can definitely win out in in a lot of cases because even though they're taught something, they could be smart enough, have the work ethic, they might not have the athleticism or vice versa. They could have all the athleticism and zero of the work ethic to put in the work to actually get there and to outwork those other freak athletes just like them to get that spot that they want if they want it bad enough. Yeah, and there's a there's a tipping point, you know, like where, um, you know, I've I've been lucky enough that I've coached a lot of young men, like yeah, from kind of thirteen to nineteen. When I first started coaching and coaching football, that was kind of the the age group that I um like I was focused on coaching, and it's um you 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 meet these kids that are so athletically gifted and so athletically superior to most other kids there but they have no drive and no work ethic because they've always had that. They've always been better than everybody. So they've never really had to work for anything in their life. And then when it gets to the pointy end where all of a sudden I'm in a scenario where everyone has the same level of athleticism that I, like I've got now, like it's that make or break point where the only thing that's going to separate those guys is going to be the work. Like the work that you're willing to put in has to be more than the other person because the, the level of athleticism nulls out. And there's some kids that have so athletically gifted that when they get put in that situation, they just fold, you know, like they just don't know what to do because they've never had to work for it before. And it's like, it's a, it's almost a sad thing to see because sometimes it gets to a point where you can't like, you can't teach that to them because it's it's too it's too late to be taught and and that's or or they don't want it to be taught because they just don't have the drive to go that little bit further either yeah no that's and that's super common in american professional sports like you see it year over year every single major north american sport baseball football basketball hockey soccer you see just these highly touted kids coming out at 17 18 19 all the way up to like 22 years old and they're just amazing you know athletes coming into the professional sport of their choice and then they get there and they just completely flail out where it's like man how did this person guy who was just amazing in college who was playing against top-notch competition and you know the freaking sec with all these other top 10 schools, he dominated them, but now he's here and he's the worst player on the team. You know, and this, it goes back to what you're saying. They're athletically gifted and they've only relied on the athleticism because they've never had to put in the work. Now it's time to put in the work. So I Matt, to be seen. Um, I'm, I'm interested. So with your training, you know, what are some of the things that you – you think as a parent you can do to combat, you know, some of the negativity and help motivate them to, to, you know, push their goalpost a little bit further. I think it's 
for for me for for me like as a parent personally and, and this is something because you know you can you can speak on it as a coach when you don't have kids but then as soon as you have kids your whole thought and dynamic changes around it and it's it's one of those things where what i think needs to be done hasn't actually changed but understanding what has to be done as a parent like it changes the way i think about it like you have to put your kids in positions where they're going to fail and they have to work out how to how to get out of it like and doing that as a parent like is is easier said than done and i'm not talking about like catastrophic failure because we don't want to put them in a position where they're going to get hurt or we don't want to put them in a position where like you know it's going to cause permanent damage in some way but controlled environments where they have to learn to work like work shit out and get out of stuff like um that's uh that's like the biggest thing i think because some of these cautionary tales that i've seen they've never been faced with enough adversity where they've had to go all right like now it's time for me to actually push through and keep moving forward or i've got to be a little bit resilient in this situation to shift my mindset and my, my mentality to all right now it's time to actually put in the work and that's there's so many i mean there's so many like that for me is the number one thing um and then just letting them understand that that like work has to be done like there's no shortcuts there's no easy fix like it sounds rah rah a motivational speaker and i i don't like to come across that way but that's just the way it is you know like that's it's life no, 100% agreed. So when you're coaching and you're working with these clients and you're working with these kids, especially physical, isn't always the, the hardest part of it, right? There's the mental and then the, then the emotional aspect of it. As part of your training, how do you help your clients? Like whether it's a child, a dad, or a mix of the two, or anyone you worked with in the past, how do you help them get over those hurdles? when those hurdles come because you can, you can plateau physically easily and then you get messed up in between, in between the years and whatnot. So what's, what's your approach in those situations? So, I mean, first, like biggest thing is it's like, things are always going to be context dependent, right? Like it's, it's going to be dependent on the individual and the situation. Yeah, of course. Like that's, and that's the thing, but like if we if we unpack it a little bit and kind of go back and let's say somebody's plateaued in their training or their sport and they want to try and overcome that, right? Um, we've got to kind of go like try and get that back to the point like where was that failure point and then work out why it failed. Like what was the what was the reason that it failed? And then if it's a if it's a mental thing and it's a confidence thing, like confidence comes from reps. Okay, and confidence comes from feeling adept at something. So if we can get it back to a point where we're doing maybe a lesser version of the activity or we're honing a skill which is going to make us better at something, and then getting good repetitions of that, so that then when we re revisit that particular scenario, we're better equipped to deal with it. And not only that, like we've we've addressed that underlying point of failure but i mean it's so context dependent it's like it depends on what it is that they've failed at if they're you know let's say for example someone's failed at a lift or they don't feel like they can lift something if it's mental yeah sometimes like a just a general g up talk well like you know come on let's go like give them a bit of a rev up can help but if they're that in their head that it's very hard to overcome sometimes we need to take a step right back understand exactly what's going on here and then address any deficits or deficiencies that may have led to that failure um yeah i mean that's a it's a that's a tough one to kind of answer just because there are a lot of there's a lot of variables there that it makes it uh it makes it hard to give a really concise answer no that makes sense that makes sense yeah so you know matt um uh, it's so funny. Recently, my daughter and I, we've started uh, jujitsu classes. And, you know, when we got you, 
as a uh, potential guest and we we're going through all of your media, I was, I was just so shocked because a lot of what you preach and what you post is exactly what I'm going through now. You know, the program doesn't really specify, you know, that uplifting of fathers and, and, you know, getting them back into their, their prime states and helping them be the best they can be. But, you know, just naturally, you know, uh, the jujitsu place that we go to has, has done that for me and for my daughter as well. You know, it, it's helped her, you know, she's, she's competing more with herself than, you know, with the kids in her class, you know, she's, she's looking forward to uh, going and, and learning a new technique or being better. And, you know, I see that same thing in me, you know, it's, it's completely changed me. So, you know, give us, give us, what does that do for a man and, and, why would you encourage that for someone that's kind of on the fringe, you know, doesn't, doesn't really know if it's for them? Like how, how do you push them into it? And what are some of the things that come out of it? I'm a massive advocate of jujitsu. Um, obviously if you've spent any time on my social media, you'll see that I like, I love it. I've done it for seven and a half years now, but um, like if we, the, the big thing, there's, there's so many things with jujitsu, right? that I think are universal across any physical activity. The first thing is getting there and just showing, like it's hard and doing hard stuff, especially as a man and doing it consistently and overcoming that, like it just, it, it sets a level of belief in you that you can go and take on other things. And as a dad, it's it's sometimes hard to overcome all the things that need to be done and in, and we don't celebrate the things that we have done and the things that we've done well, but going and doing something hard over and over and over again, just sets you up to be able to tackle anything really. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy when you get to the point that you can tackle that, but that helps. And that doesn't matter whether it's jujitsu or it's lifting weights or it's going and doing, you know, something that some form of physical activity, I think just physically exerting ourselves is just something that is so primal within our DNA. When we connect with that, it almost unlocks and unleashes this, this thing that maybe we didn't know that we had inside us. Or for some dads, we used to have inside us and we've kind of lost along the way of trying to provide for our family, trying to make sure that we're a good husband, good father, and we're doing all these things for everything else. So we forego the things that we want to do to make sure that they're all taken care of. And that's that natural provider urge, which is really hard for a lot of us to overcome. And like, it's something that like I felt guilty to when I first had had kids, well, when, I, when my daughter first came along, just because, that's just what we need to do. We need to make sure that they're taken care of. Like these little humans come into the world and they're 100% dependent on you and your partner. So if we don't take care of them, who's going to like no one is. And that's, it's, it's easy to get caught up on that and think that we need to put everything into there. And then once we start spending some time for ourselves, we need to, we, we understand that it actually enhances every other thing that happens in our life. And then if we couple into that, we're doing something like jujitsu or we're doing something training, tra something, some form of training where we're actually physically exerting ourselves to the point where we're struggling and then we're overcoming that struggle. Not only does that feed into us being more capable and we start progressing in something, but our confidence starts to build and that's going to flow onto your kids as well too. Like they're going to pick up on that. Like if you love something, like my son now, he's, he's just about to turn four and every second day he's asking me when he can start jujitsu because he sees me, he like he knows I love it. My daughter hasn't been so interested in it. It's something that like I'm very keen to get her into um, because I think it's very important for girls to know, like have some level of self-defense and that, but that's a, like that's kind of shooting off into another topic. But um, I think that just, doing something hard creates that confidence in us. But then more importantly, like as a dad, if you've gone from like a lot of dads that I deal with have had like some level of athleticism in their past, right? They used to do something that they enjoyed, whether it be go to the gym, whether it be play sports or whatever the case might be. And they just don't know how to make it fit in their current life because 
they've got other commitments that are different to what they had when they when they were doing that thing previously. And what really needs to happen is they need to almost let go of that previous life, draw a line in the sand and go, righto, I'm going back to do this thing because I know I enjoy it. And that's a very important thing. Like you have to do something you enjoy, but I'm not attached to the idea that I have to be at this level because a past version of myself was there because that's not fair on like where you are now as a, as a man and as a human being. And that can suck so much of the enjoyment out of any activity when you're in that constant comparison state of comparing to how far away from something you are compared to where you are now. And that's like something that stops so many people dead in their tracks of making any change because they look at the mountain that they've got to climb rather than just focusing on putting one front and foot of the one foot in front of the other and taking those steps and stacking those wins. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I can completely relate to that. Everything you just said is like, it's like the whole journey you take, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, for me, it was I finally settled in to the, the place we're living now. I was able to, you know, have free time. I didn't know what to do with it. And, you know, I seen it as something for my daughter. And then when I hopped on the mat, you know, I, I fell in love with wrestling in high school um, because I fell out of love with football. You know, I was in football a very long time since a young age. And then, you know, when I got into high school, um, I, I popped on the mat for the first time and I fell in love with it. And like you said, you know, life happened. You got away from it. Um, I had to grow up real quick, be a dad. And, you know, I, I, I put all my passions to the side. And so through this, I kind of hopped on the mat and it clicked in my head, you know, oh, I needed this. Oh, this is this is what was missing, you know, and it, it's you feel it so much with different things in your life, whether it be, you know, uh, video games, drinking with your buddy, shooting the shit, what, you know, stuff that's very negative, you know, and, and this has been a, a big change in my life. So it's, you know, I'm more accountable with myself. I, I do other things to help support me in jujitsu. So like, you know, going for a run, trying to get the cardio better for the session, you know even time management, trying to schedule better, you know, it's eating better, everything, you know, it's a whole lifestyle change. And so with something like that, what is something that, or what's a first step that someone can take to try and, you know, start their journey? As cliche as this sounds, it's just showing up, you know, like you've just got to, you've just got to show up and do it. Like you've got to, you've got to get out of, if, 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 because a lot of people, when they go to make a change, the only thing stopping them, the only thing stopping them from making that initial step is themselves, right? Like there's there's reasons and there's excuses. And there's like there and I think what happens is a lot of people legitimize excuses as reasons and they make something that they can turn, you know, an anthill into a mountain. It's like how they start thinking about worst case scenario. And then when you show up and you do it, it's actually not that bad. Now there are going to be things like, so jujitsu, let's use jujitsu as an example. Like I love it. And I think everyone should try it, but there are going to be people that probably shouldn't do it. Like if you have, if you have injuries that, you know, somebody tugging on your arms or like, you know, you've got fused vertebrae in your neck or something like that. So, you know, somebody trying to strangle you is probably not going to be the best thing for your long-term health. It might not be the best place to start. There might be some other starting point. So things like that are almost genuine reasons, right? But there, for a lot of people, there's actually less of them than I, I what most people think, I believe. Like, I think a lot of the reasons that stop people from starting really come down to their own mind, their own fears. And also they're scared, like, especially with something like jujitsu with males, like it's that ego, it's putting that ego aside and understanding that, all right, I'm what, like when I first, my mindset when I first went and started jujitsu was like, I'm committed to do this for like 10 years. I'm not going to try and get like a blue belt. I'm not going to try and get it. Like I'm, I'm not concentrating on belts. Like, I understand, I have the inherent understanding that this is a long-term thing. And that came, mindset came about from doing previous martial arts, also 
having coached so many people and seeing that mindset of I'm trying to do it for the short term, jujitsu is not the type of thing you can do for the short term. Like you're only, you do it for six months. You're only just starting to understand little bits of stuff. Like I've been doing it for seven and a half years and I still learn stuff every time I go to class, every time I step on the mats. But you only get to that point if you take that long-term mindset. It doesn't matter whether it's jujitsu, doesn't matter whether it's training as well too, taking that long-term mindset and then having realistic expectations about where you want to go. So if you can get past your own shit in the first place, showing up's the first step, but then also having realistic expectations. So then if it, you know, jujitsu is one thing, but let's say, for example, someone wants to lose weight or they want to, you know, be able to get back in the gym. Understanding that, like, probably going and jumping in and doing six times a week. If it works in the short term, it's probably not going to work in the long term. But doing three times a week is probably going to be sustainable for the next five or 10 years. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stack those wins. That doesn't mean I'm going to show up three times a week every week. But for the vast majority of times, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do that because I've taken that long-term mindset of I'm doing this for the future rather than just doing it for now. And I think that's also why a lot of older men get like attract, like where I train, there are a lot of quote unquote masters athletes. So over thirties. And I think that's why a lot of older men get attracted to jujitsu because they have that mentality shift around. All right. Like I'm ready to commit to this for the long haul. I'm not here for it for the short term because I look in hindsight. And I think if I had started this in my early twenties, I'm not sure that I would have stuck with it because I don't think I would have had the maturity and that mentality to stick with it. I think it would have been too much of a kick to my ego and I potentially would have given up. Now I'm super stubborn. So I might've also just been like stubborn my way through, but you know, it's, it's one of those things. I'm, um, uh, that's what I reckon. I think just firstly, you've just got to do it. But then secondly, um, having a little bit of a realistic expectation about what you want to get out of it is one way to make sure that you can consistently stick to it and then continue to show up afterwards. Most definitely, man. I, I love all of that. That's, that's so true. I mean, the mindset you talked about there, you have to think long-term and you have to think realistically what you're going to want out of it. And that's how you can approach so many different situations just in life. Like, what am I going to want out of this? Whether it's relationships or a difficult conversation you have with your significant other or your kids or possibly like your kid's school or like another parent or whatever the heck it is, you know, you have to think like, what am I realistically wanting out of this? And then I love what you said about stacking the wins you have to stack those wins on top of each other. You have to celebrate those individual milestones and accomplishments along the way. Um, for me personally, you know, I'm a baseball player. And I love what you said a little bit earlier too about kind of letting go of that past self. Because I was, you know, even now up to the last couple of years, I've gone and I've tried to play like um, adult wood bat league baseball here locally. And try to replicate a version of myself from 10 years ago that was being recruited to play college baseball before an elbow injury. And I've been trying to replicate that, get that back, get that back, get my shoulder back, get my throwing and everything back. And honestly, it clicked for me. It's like, I'm not that anymore. I'm 10 years older, 10, 11 years older now. My elbow doesn't work the same. I don't throw as hard. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. So that was that was personally just super insightful for me. Um, but when you're, you know, helping someone kind of let go of that, that past self that they saw as the best version of themselves, quote unquote, and now they see themselves as, let's say, the worst version of themselves in their eyes specifically. Obviously, you as their coach don't see them as that. You see them where they're at, of course. But when they start taking those steps, and you kind of hit on it, um, what impact? So have you trained anyone that for like five, ten years yeah. at this point? Yeah. What kind of impact has that had? Like just looking at those people who you've trained with for years upon years now. 
like what have you seen like your impact be in their lives and what has changed in their lives so this is like one of the this is the thing that keeps me like going back to coaching right like the the reason why i like i love doing it and why you know someone that started off as a sports coach who loved the art of coaching and teaching people things transitioned into like to help people basically like transform. But I'll tell you a story about a client that I had at the gym and he started with us when he was 45 and he wrote, we had a, in the gym, we had a wall, which was a blackboard wall. And we used to every quarter, every three months, we'd get everybody to wipe, wipe their goals off and we'd rewrite their goals up. And I remember within a month of him coming, coming in, he wrote on the board, he goes, train, train till I'm 50. And then, so he wrote on the board that he wants to train to, and I, I remembered that and we kept going with that and we kept chipping away at it. And then five years later, he came to me and he goes, do you remember that I wrote on the board that I wanted to keep training until I was 50? I'm like, yeah. And he showed me a photo. He showed me a photo of himself, like himself when he first started and when he finished, he goes, look at this. And like he showed, and there was complete like physical transformation, but he goes, that's like the tra- physical transformation is great. But he's also, he was an older dad. Like he didn't, he wasn't a dad until he was in his forties for the first time. So at the time that he started with us, like, I think his, his son was maybe like, maybe it's like five or six, but at that stage, when he got to 50, he, his son was starting to play his own sports and everything like that. But he goes, you know, the best thing I can go and I can teach my kids cricket. I can teach them how to, do, and I can run around with them and I don't have to think twice about it. If I'd have tried to do that five years ago, like I wouldn't have done it. I would have actually avoided doing it in fear of being embarrassed of doing it. And like, that's, that's the thing that like, when I talk to people and when we're trying to let go of like that past self, it's like, think about what the, the, think about like five years from now and something that you want to do in this life that you're in now. Because your past self didn't know what it was like to have kids, didn't know what it was like to be able to run around with them, didn't know like the type of things you're avoiding because maybe you're not you're in the best place that you could be right now. Like, and let's set goals based around that scenario. And because that scenario is a completely different scenario that you're working towards compared to when, what the whatever scenario you were working towards in your 20s your late teens or whatever the case might be because for all of us as dads like if we can attach a goal to our family because for most of us like and me included that's like the number one priority to us there's a very small 100%. percentage of us that are going to give up on that like moving forward 100 percent. you know and that's and that's that's the thing right like if we're willing to accept that we're working towards something in this phase of our life and in this chapter of our life that's going to be completely independent from something previously and this is where like i'm not a big fan in focusing on body fat or the weight on the scales or because they're all arbitrary numbers and if we do the right things and we take the right actions habits and behaviors those things will move in the right direction but we also don't want to be we, we want to be able to go to the kid's birthday party and have a piece of cake or have a beer with it, like actually enjoy life. And some of those things don't allow for us to do that. And that's part of being like a well-balanced dad. But, and that's where, you know, we've got to understand what is it that we want to work for? What's important to us? And like, then we can start to set out some goals based around that. And that is how we keep moving forward and how we keep going. But like those long-term transformations, and it doesn't even, it takes people, I think, less time than what they actually think. I have I heard a saying, and I don't know what said it, but like as human beings, we severely underestimate, we severely overestimate what we can do in a year and severely underestimate what we can do in 10. And like, that's just, yeah, I love that, yeah. that's just one thing that like, that's a saying that has always stuck in my mind since I've heard it, especially as like a coach and somebody who's owned a gym and now working with people on like transformations, it's like, Hey, you got to be willing to invest the time to do this because there's no magic for, despite what you might read on Instagram, like there's no magic formula. There's no magic pill. It's just consistent work over a period of time. And whoever can be the most consistent over the longest period 
is going to see the best results. Yeah, and I think it's funny you bring that up because, you know, it's the same even on, you know, the financial side of things, you know. It's the best time to ever buy is now. Yep. You know, it is it's ten years ago, you know, actually. But you know, if if you haven't done that, you know, right now is the best time to do it. But I think kids so, kids too, having kids has a way of making us focus on the long term. Like because we start thinking yeah. about their future. We start thinking about what we want, like what we want for them. And so that's why I think you see like so many dads and mums, like when they get to a point where you know, like yourself, Aaron, where life's kind of settled down a little bit and now I can go and commit to something that's got a bit of time for me and they stick to something for so long because it's it's even though it is time for them, they almost don't see it. They, they see it as an investment for their kids and for their family. And that's like, it's it's been such an eye-opener for me since I've had kids. Like, you, you, you hear sayings like, oh, I want to do, I want to, um, be this way so I can walk my daughter down the aisle. And then when you have a kid of your, like you have a daughter of your own, it's like, oh, like I kind of understood the context of that, but now I get like the deeper meaning behind that. Like I understand what it is now to think like my daughter, do- my daughter now who's turned like, you know, 18 years down the track. Like I get what it is to think that far in advance. And yeah, you know, I may have in my younger years thought it like in five and 10 year plans, but it, like, I, I don't think I was actually thinking it of things on that level. Yeah, no, it's crazy how we go from thinking like when we're young, we're young bachelors, we're single, um, just kind of going through life. You know, we think in very arbitrary, like five year plans, like, Oh, I want to look like this. I want to be going to the gym. Then I want to have this, you know, type of life, you know, it's just very, just, it's very shallow. It's not very deep, like you mentioned. And then once you have kids and you have a family and you're raising these, these little human beings, it's like you, you deepen your understanding of just like life and the world and the views and everything you want to do to take care of them. And it, it consumes your world. It definitely consumes it. And but that, you're thinking deeper. And that's maybe not even, it's it's not even shallow, you know. It's just it's it's um we're thinking of ourselves, yeah. which is all we re- like, which is all we really have to worry about. Like we aren't, yeah. Like, at that point in life, that's all we have to worry about is ourselves, you know. And and yes, we worry about like our mom and our dad and siblings and things like that. But like what we do on a daily basis doesn't impact them, or or doesn't have depending on how big it is, obviously. But it can have the ability to impact them. But like if sure. But what I do on a daily basis right now with my two, like two little humans that I've helped create in the same house as me who mimic every single thing that I do, good and bad, like what I do on a daily basis now, my actions d- does affect people that are very, very important to me. So I've got to be really mm-hmm. mindful of what I do. Because, and so then it's no longer about me, it's about them. And that can be a tra- that can be a slippery slope the other way as well because we can lose ourselves in the in the process of thinking that way. So it's like it's that fine line, it's that balancing act to make sure that you're 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 in the right you're in like in that right gray area where you're not too much about yourself and you're not too much about them. You're you're spending enough time on yourself to try and like you know benefit them long term. And it's hard. It's a very hard um. Like it's a hard thing to get to, and sometimes it's very mm-hmm. hard to get to a happy place. Um, and a, like a lot of dads struggle with it. Like that was one of the main reasons why I started my podcast because I, and why it's been a solo podcast for the most part because I just wanted to talk about like the things that I've been struggling with. Because like there was not there's nothing worse than when you're in the thick of it, like feeling like you're completely alone, and that's just like. And that's, you know, there wasn't a lot of, there's a lot more great resources out there now. But, you know, when I first started this thing like three years ago, there wasn't. And that's, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and going going back to what we were just touching on, you know, um, I, for so long I was worried about, you know, because 
my wife and myself, we had kids very young. Jewel, Jewel's the same, you know. Um, I had to worry about being financially stable, setting up a, a stable home for my kids to live in, you know, while also working on my relationship with my wife because we're both very young. So, I mean, we're just growing up together. You know, we're all growing up together. And, you know, I, it finally got to the spot where, you know, we're settled down. Things are doing great. Kids are doing good. You know, where I finally got to take a look at myself. And, you know, even now um, I've been blessed that, you know, I, I have a son on the way. So I have another, you know, mouth coming into the world to feed and, and to teach. But, you know, it was then when I found out um you know, what, what kind of man do I want to project onto my family, you know, or, or what kind of precedent do I want to set? What kind of example do I want to set for my family? You know, and it's, that's what really this push was, you know, and it's luckily for me, you know, God, God bless me and everything lined up, you know, correctly. But as you were saying earlier, you know, it can be so easy to get caught in the funk like that, you know, and, and, you know, where things aren't aligning and you're not able to, you know, self or course correct, yeah. you know, you by yourself. So, you know, what, what are, what can you uh, attest to and, and, you know, tell us about, you know, reaching out for help and, you know, what, what are some things people can do to, you know, find what they need and, and the resources that they can, they can use. I think so. This is this is actually going to be so, like it's different from country to country. So, like in Australia, right? There's actually you can actually get free mental health help. So there's there's hotlines and things like that that you can actually call for free that have qualified psychologists there where you can like actually pick up the phone and talk to somebody. You can also walk into a doctor's office and you can get what's called a mental health shared care plan where you actually get five like visits to a psychologist or a counselor for free to, that you can go and do. So like one of the things, because the dads that I'm dealing with are predominantly in Australia or, or that I'm talking to. And so the, the access to free professional help, if you're really, really, really thick in it is there like is, is there. And that's, I think, I think the one thing for, like this is one thing I'm very mindful of when I when I talk about like mental health and this stuff, right? Like I'm not I'm not a counselor, I'm not a psychologist. What I help people, what I help arm people with is tools to help them basically organize their life and get the most out of their life. And for a lot of people I work with, that is that can help get them out of that funk. It can help turn the corner of that anxiety and depression they need. But some people like that's not enough, right? Like you need to get professional help. And if that's the, the, if, if you're at that point, like you need to go and get it. No, no amount of podcasts, no talking to your friends or anything like that will like you need to. And it's, there's, there's no shame in doing that. Like you're not less of a man. You're not anything like, like that needs to be a path for some people. For others, we just need to be a little bit more open and honest about like how we feel and where we're at with things. Like it, I, I know for me personally, um, like talking to my close friends and actually having an open line of communication with them about exactly what was going on, like how I was feeling emotionally, like, you know, and from like emotionally how I was going. Also too, like if you're in a marriage or you've got a wife, you've got somebody that you're living with and you've had kids with, like talk to them as well. Like, they're essentially your best friend, you know, and sometimes it's things that you can't and that's what your friend network's there for. But, you know, there's there's a lot of great initiatives in Australia um, that they have around mental health. Like there's one called Are You OK Day, which is a day that they have nationally where it's about asking, like, your mates, are you OK? Um, and there's a lot of good stuff coming out about this. But I think one thing that I've noticed um there's a lot of people that comment on very deep mental health disorders that aren't equipped to do it. I'm, I'm, I try not to comment on it because I know I'm not equipped to. So I think we've got to understand where you're at. And if it seems like there's no way out and you've got nothing left, like there's no shame in going and getting professional help. Like I've done it before. I've not, I know a lot of people like in my circle that have gone and done the same thing. And it definitely does help. 
and it's just like one of those things you've got to do like if big for yourself for your family for and for everyone in your life and that's um like that's one you've just got to talk like it's such a it's such a big thing that we don't do as men i think we just worry that like it's uh seen as weak and it shouldn't be yeah you know and and this is something Jewel and I have been touching on for the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm so proud of Jewel. You know, he's, he's got his, um, bachelor's now in, in psychology and, you know, he's actually diving into this exact work. So, you know, Jewel, what, what are, what are some things you're looking forward to in this, this new position that you have? Yeah. So there's a lot there, you know, like you mentioned, um, when it comes to a dad, you know, it's so often they put themselves on the back burners and we focus so much on our families, our kids. And it take it can take a lot of time to come to that place where it's like, oh, it's finally, it's finally me time. It's finally me time. And that self-care gets pushed way, way, way to the back burner for years upon years upon years upon years. Decades for some men, like, you know, people from generations before us, decades that gets pushed aside, never gets talked about. And one thing that's just super important, you know, it's, it's not weak to speak. And we are just incredibly behind here in the United States when it comes to these kind of services being widely available. That is something I'm emphatically passionate about. It's just we're so behind. I mean, we're both here on this podcast right now, but you're talking about in your country – that someone can walk into their normal primary care doctor any given day of the week, say, hey, I need legit mental health health help. Here's five free professional services for you. You can do a lot with five sessions of, of really good intensive therapy. You can do a lot. Um, mixing your physical with that, you know, you're getting things right with your body, your diet, your brain, your emotions, everything like that. It's It's incredible what you can do with that kind of support system and that in place. But also, like you said, it's important to talk to those around you that you're around most and be vulnerable with them because they are your best friends. They are your support system. They are your backbone. You're their backbone and they're yours. You know, you can't, especially for dads, it's so common, like you said, that we'll just push our stuff down, push it to the side. It doesn't matter. It's about then first. But at the end of the day, like I tell this to friends, I tell this to you know, people I work with, parents, whatnot, anyone I talk to, it's like, yes, you're right. Your kid is a a top priority, but your kid also deserves you to be the best version of yourself so that you can truly give them everything that you didn't have growing up. Because when a lot of people say that, I feel, and I think I totally missed the question, but when a lot of people say that, I feel is like, I want to give my kids everything I have growing up. And they're a lot of times they're talking about material, but they're also talking about the emotional and the mental support Mm -hmm. that they didn't get. And so you can't do that as a parent. If you're not taking the steps forward that you need to, to get there, whether it's, you know, getting into a gym, getting into a martial art, getting into uh, running or anything for you, for yourself, anything for you physically, I think is just, next level it's going to bring you a level of clarity that's just gonna change your life something i you know recently got back on i've got back on the wagon a few weeks ago you know just moving my body more especially moving it more with my kids where i take them swimming where we hang out at the pool they just swim around they get all their energy out they're exhausted come 7 30 8 o'clock at night i love it it's the best um especially being a single dad with the two um but like they're moving their body and they're having so much fun. We're having fun together. And heck, I'm tired too because I'm chasing them around the pool, but my body's moving. And then I'm going to the gym. I'm there in the gym more. I'm exposed to the environment. You know, I'm more open to try new things. Like over the last couple of weeks, I've tried a freaking yoga Pilates class mix. That was sore for three days after that. And then I did a karate class the next week. First time ever doing any kind of martial art. It was difficult. I was out of place, but at the same time, I wasn't because like, you got to start, you got to start somewhere. You got to start at some point in your life. And, you know, you kind of mentioned that well-balanced dad diet, 
you know, it's, there's so many things that go into that, that well-balanced dad diet, and you've hit on pretty much all of it, you know, hard work, um, values, dedication, commitment, long-term goals, uh, discipline, so many things that are so important, open communication, being vulnerable with yourself. Um, how do you translate that for someone? Yes, you can translate it to them in the gym in that setting, but how are you, what's that take home message for these clients for that? Well, well balanced dad diet. I'm going to, I'm going to patent pending on that one. Um, You should, but no, seriously, how does that well balanced dad diet, how does that translate from the gym to the home for you personally and for what you work with, how you coach your clients to transfer that? So, so I think I, because that's a good question. It's um, I mean, it's it, how it kind of tr- translates across. It it just uh, it just allows you to do more and be more effective with your time. Like it just that's by do by by ticking the boxes and you know filling your own cup and doing the things that are important to you. It it becomes then about like quality over quantity and that's the that's you know you mentioned going and swim and running around and swimming with your kids and and stuff like that if you weren't physically able like none of that becomes quality time and i've met plenty of dads and i've heard plenty of stories about hey i get home from work and the only thing i want to do is i want to sit on the couch with the beer and watch tv and the kids are there oh and- that drives me it drives me crazy, man. It drives me crazy because it's like you you just lost out on like it's hard. It's hard when you're a single parent. You only have your kids half the time, and many dads have them far less than that than me. I'm very fortunate that I have them half the time, but that drives me bonkers. But it's this, like why? This is this is the, the I think it's the lack of appreciation. Like when they're there all the time, you don't appreciate the time that you've got. Like they don't have that again. Like drawing back to one of the points in the healthy day in the healthy dad diet that you're talking about. Like that long term mindset of like, and even short term mindset. Like this isn't going to last forever. Like it's something that plays on my mind all the time when it comes to my kids. Like I, I shared a yeah. post this morning about like my um like I I'll go for a walk most mornings if I'm not doing jujitsu in the mornings. Like I generally start my um, morning with a walk, and for me it's usually like a little bit of like reflection or I'll put like a a, a podcast on or something like that. I'll go for a walk. But the last couple of weeks, like my son's been wanting to come with me and I don't want like, you know, I want him to come out. We've got a beautiful area, like with some wetlands and some lakes, the ducks are like there and everything like that. So I'll stick him in his trike and I'll go for a walk. Now I get this, like I'll get this kind of talk in the back of my head where it's like, you should still be learning something. You're missing out on time for this. This is going to help you move the business forward. And I'm like, yeah, but also on top of that, this is also time I'm not going to be able to get back with my son. And that's, that's for me, that's like this experience, like this experience will only ever happen once. And that's the th- like, yes, there might be different iterations of a very similar experience, but he may never ask me again, like he did this morning. Can birds go to space? And as funny as I love that, no, I'm I'm looking at the post and, right now. <laughs> and as and as and as funny as that sounds, like that is just that is like you know thinking of things on that level and being so appreciative of those things. Then all of a sudden, when you've got the urge to go and sit on the couch and drink a beer with the kids in the room, it's like, well, what else could I be doing with this time with them? And if, yes. you're, if you're so exhausted to a point where you can't concentrate doing something else because you're not quite, you're not physically capable of doing it, then you need to make the appropriate steps to shift that. And that's how it filters yeah. into everything else, you know, like, because then it's like, all right, well, I'm, because I'm not, I haven't physically done what I need to, to take care of myself. It's a, it's not only affecting them it, like it's affecting them because of the t- time that i'm spending with them but if you want to be mm. like if you if you want to take a selfish mindset to it 
like have a think about the guilt that you're going to have in five years time when you've done that consistently for five years and you haven't made the change and you can't get that time back with them. Like as, as, as shitty as that sounds, like that's true. That's the reality of it. Right. Like that. And that's, and some, some people, unfortunately, like they need to have that real long, hard talk to themselves because like it's just the reality of it. It's not trying to make them feel worse about their situation or anything like that. But you know, if you keep doing the same thing and getting the same result, like isn't that that's the definition of insanity, isn't it? Isn't that the old saying? Like, yes, yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it's it is. it's doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's so. It, go ahead. I'm sorry. And that's and and I mean, at the end of the day, that's the point, right? Like, if you're if there's something that you're not happy with that you know inherently you want to change, if if you're not taking the steps to, and this this is going to sound very motivational speaker again, but if you're not taking the appropriate steps to change that which are different from the steps that you're taking now. Like there's only one person you can blame when it gets five years down the track and all that regret is there because you haven't been able to spend that time that you wanted to with your kids. Like there's no, there's, there's at that point, there's no one else to blame. And that's where, you know, shift, like we spoke about earlier, shifting that mentality from, you know, reasons and excuses is, is, because you feel tired, a reason or is it is it an excuse? Because realistically, it's an excuse, right? Like I feel tired, yeah. uh, like I'm, and you're being a little bit lazy about it. But if you like physically feel like you can't move at all, the underlying problem is not everything else. It's that hey, maybe I need to do something to try and improve my physical state so that I don't feel like this at the end of the day. And that might mean you need to take three afternoons a week where you're not sitting on the couch and drinking beer and actually go to the gym and do something or go to jujitsu and like, you know, get yourself moving, go for a run, go for a walk. Like a big thing I've done with a lot of people in this program who are in, you know, pretty bad shape. It's like, Hey, all I want you to do is I want you to go for a walk 30 minutes, five times a week. And that's going to be a starting point. Like you do five 30 minute walks a week, two things that's going to do. That's going to start to help you etch out that time for yourself. That's number one, mm-hmm. because that's if you if you can do that and you after you've told me you don't have time, then we're off to a pretty good start. And then secondly, if you're doing absolutely zero physical activity, it's going to start to tick that box as well, too. And then from there, if we do that for a two to three week period, we're able to be consistent with it. All right. Then we might do, you know, hey, let's do let's do some squats and stuff before we get into like, you know, before we go for our walk now. And just incrementally increase things and start to increase that activity as we go yeah. through. Um, you know, so it doesn't have to be complicated. But if if you're in that position and you don't change it, there's really no one else to point the finger at but that ma- the man in the mirror, you know? Very true. And I feel like that's very true for a lot of men. It's very true for a lot of men where maybe it's just me talking here because it's very true for myself. Uh, Aaron knows this, but, you know, I'm my own worst enemy. I am the anti-hero and the antagonist and protagonist or whatever it's called of my own story. I, I would, <laughs> You're the antagonist. You're, yeah, that one. You're the antagonist in your own story. <laughs> yeah, I'm my own antagonist in my own story. And I feel like that's, a, that's true for a lot of men. Like I'm in a couple dad groups on Facebook and these dudes are just beating themselves up so freaking hard. Like it's my fault. What can I do to change this situation what can i do what can i do what can i do there's a dude i work with he's always like complaining about his his girlfriend and baby mama whatever and just like yeah she just has me do all this extra stuff i don't know why and you know i just do it and you know keep her happy whatever and it's like dude we're the same age and yet i'm your boss like Granted, everyone has a different path, a different life choices, different things they do, things like that. But it's like, where's you're burnt out, dude. Like I can see it. You're burnt out with your family, you know. And I feel like that's one of the worst places to be. And that's where a lot of men are because they're not taking, like you're saying, they're not taking that thirty minutes a day just to go and walk. There's so many benefits to just walking. You know, you're moving your body. You're outside. You're getting fresh air. You're getting sun, vitamin D. You're you're moving, you're increasing your longevity, you're improving your yourself. You're and you're and you in that same aspect, you're eliminating a very basic excuse of oh, I don't have time. You have the time. It's all about just how you're using it. Yeah. 
Hundred um, percent. It's, it's, it's just very true. So, you know, let's let's wrap up here. Let's let's bring it back home home for you. When you're one thing that you're excellent at here, one thing that I see all over your pages and whatnot is creating a worldview for your clients and for them. But bring it back down to a personal level. When you're helping create a worldview for your kids, what does that look like? And how do you want them to view the world? When it's all said and done, at the end of the day, what's that the worldview of your kids going out into the great, big, scary world, especially if they come to the U.S.? Keep them in Australia. <laughs> um, you know, you, you know, this is um, – I don't know. This might sound a little bit esoteric, but – it's not about how you view the world. It's how you view yourself is like the big thing that like I try, like I'm trying to get my kids to understand, especially my, like, especially my daughter, right. As a, like, as a, like young ladies are so susceptible to the way the world is right now. And it is. hundred percent. I mean, we have four girls, five girls total on this podcast right now. Yeah between the three of us so yeah and and it's like it, it's like it, it's about how you view yourself and and this is it goes it's the same for my son too like if you say you're going to do something do it on a on a deeper level understand what is inside your circle of control and what is outside of it and be real about that accept the things that are outside like outside of your circle of control and then take the action to move the needle on the things that are inside of your control. Like they're the, they're the big things that I've noticed with my daughter, like as she's gotten older and she's at, like she's in a third year of formal schooling and things like that. So she's getting exposed to more of this stuff. And the way the world is at the moment can create so much angst and anxiety for everybody, let alone like a seven, let, let alone a seven. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Hey, yeah. There are so much, there's so much noise and there's so much stuff that goes on that you're not, you, you can't control 90% of it, but you can control how you feel about yourself. You can control the action that you take and being true to that action. And that's, that's the bit that like, that's the thing that I just keep trying to hammer home to them. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall, but you know, if I keep saying it and we keep showing it, like proving it to them through my actions as well, then hopefully as we hit those teenage years, it might sink in. Yeah, hopefully. Well, Matt, it was amazing talking to you, man. And there's, there's so many things to draw from here, but you know, I think we're going to title this episode, the well-balanced dad diet. And there's so many things included in that, you know, one big thing that we didn't dive deep into, but we've talked about it consistently on this show is being present being present with your kids, putting down the beer, putting down the, I just want to kick my feet up and left alone, watch TV, kick off that 1920s mindset, um, you know, and get up and be present with your kids, you know, play a card game with them, do something with them, color with them. Your kids love you and they want to spend that time with you. They're desperate for that with you. Um, And that's all they want. That's all they want. And kids will always remember who, who showed up. They will always remember who showed up, who was there for them when they needed them, and when they didn't. Because when they need you, and you weren't there for them the first time, or all those other times, just doing basic stuff with them, building that relationship with them, answering the questions like you with your son, like, do birds fly to space? Now he knows he can go with you to you for the most ridiculous thing. And he also knows later in life, it's going to be in his brain, oh, I can go to dad for something. I asked him freaking do birds fly to space when I was four. Um, I haven't stopped hearing about that. Now I'm 16, but now I actually need to talk to him about something serious. And I know he's got my back. I know he's going to, he's going to talk to me. And I just feel that's so important, you know, be present, you know, be part of their world, you know, the same dedication that you would give to yourself, you give to your kids, but you also have to make sure you're giving it to yourself, you know, instill those values on yourself, set your own goals and work hard for your goals. Self-dedication, self-commitment, self-discipline, self-love, all those things included in the well-balanced dad diet or the healthy dad diet. Um, And 
yeah, Aaron, anything, anything from you? Uh, yeah, the last little tidbit I want to leave with you guys uh, today is, you know, I, I forgot where I heard it, but, you know, when your kids are young, it's the only time where they don't have to commit their time to something else, really, besides school. You know, so if you choose to sit back and indulge in, you know, things that are going to take your short term attention away from the stress and whatever, you know, once they become even teenagers, young teenagers, their time starts going away. And so that's even less time for you to spend with them, even less time to make memories. And then once they get to young adults, they're in the same boat as that you are right now. You know, they're managing their time. They're managing their relationship. So, you know, it, it really starts, like like Matt said, you know, when they're young, you got to build that that strong foundation. You have to you be that open book, be vulnerable, be there, be present, be active, you know, set that example for them to 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 really help them throughout their their young lives, you know, in order for them to you know, have a, a good course of, of, to follow throughout their life. 100%. And Matt, you know, go ahead and first question is I need one of those UDP shirts, uh, long sleeve black, preferably. No problem. I'll reorder one of those, but um, go ahead and leave the listeners with anything you want to leave them to wrap us up here. Uh, you get the last word and uh, plug yourself away as well. Cool. Well, uh, that you can find me on Instagram is at the Unstoppable Dad. Facebook's the Unstoppable Dad Project. Uh, my podcast is the Unstoppable Dad Project. Uh, at solo podcast myself, just going through tips and tricks that I've come across from my time as a dad, um, and also through being a coach for the last fifteen years, and just my personal journey, my struggles that I've had with my mental health at different times, and just day-to-day dad week-to-week dad life so uh it's called the unstoppable dad project you can find it on all the podcast platforms apple spotify google um and that's probably where you can go to find me for any information but i appreciate your time guys it's been unreal chatting to you we'll have to do it again yeah it's been great we can't wait we'd love to have you on again yes sir thank you for your time we appreciate you thanks guys appreciate it hey Hey, you, are you still here with me? Thank you so much for listening all the way to the very end. Definitely appreciate it. Don't forget to leave five stars, leave a comment, leave a review, head over to YouTube, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social medias, even TikTok. And all of those links, plus every single deal that we have in affiliation, you can find in our link tree. Just by going to the show notes, clicking the link tree link, it really does help us just with likes, five stars, subscribes, all of that. It's a great way to support us and it really helps us keep going. We really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Can't wait to be with you next week.